So you want to be an E4 player. You've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to give you some very interesting and unique ideas you might have not thought about before, how to take on some of the biggest defenses that you're going to face, uh, and give you some tools with a little bit of bite and a little bit of spice to them to throw your opponents off their game. We're going to start with E5 and C5, okay? Because those are the ones you're going to face 80% of the time. And then we'll go to the other 20. I'll give you a couple of different ideas against the French, the Karakhan, uh, the Alakine, maybe the Pirates Modern, and so on and so forth. Against E5, these are all personalized recommendations, let's not forget. And you feel, can feel free to ask me in the comments about other things, but I am a huge believer in the Vienna system. Knight C3 and delaying the development of the knight to F3. For example, if black plays knight F6 here, I am a huge fan of the Vienna Gambit. The Vienna Gambit has a lot of... Oh, I mean, I mean a lot of firepower, uh, you know, up to the 2200, 2300 level against folks that don't usually get this and don't have a, a clear repertoire against this. The main line of this goes D5, takes, takes, and I'm not recommending this or this, which are the overwhelming main lines. Actually, I have Queen F3 as a, a big recommendation, and then you have to study the opening from there. Uh, if the Vienna Gambit gets declined, then you play Knight F3, get this Bishop out, castle, and use the open F file for your pieces. Against non-Knight F6 systems, you play something like Bishop C4, D3, and then slowly build for F4 before you play Knight F3. But even the copycat system can run into huge trouble. I'm just going to give you a very quick example. Queen g4 here to attack g7 can be met with queen f6 counterattacking you, and now knight d5 is completely winning for the white side. All right? That's, that, that's all you have to know about this position. Queen f2, king d1, that's not mate. And queen g7, knight c7, and knight h3 trapping the queen after queen d4, d3 are all coming. So... The copycat system is already very dangerous uh, for black, and if black plays something like this, I am a huge fan of d3 and f4 systems, and I highly recommend that you go investigate. You'll be winning a lot of games when you play Vienna. Honestly, you will. Against the Sicilian. Now, what you need to know about Sicilian players, in my mind, is that they study a lot of their open Sicilian repertoire, closed Sicilian repertoires, and I'm, I'm still a big fan of knight c3 stuff. Okay, I like knight c3 stuff quite a lot, uh, especially close Sicilian with g3, bishop g2, a slow buildup of the pawns on this side of the board to start some sort of attack. Uh, but there is also one very tricky system here with knight c3, knight c6, and I showed this in a, in a recent stream that I did, bishop b5 here. And you want to take and damage the structure before you play d3, h3, and again, just expand on this side of the board, uh, covering the light squares now that you trade. One cool thing here after knight d4 is knight f3. And if your bishop gets taken and they play something like a6, you just come back and basically what you want to do is play d4 and get very rapid development. So something like this, d4 takes, queen takes, get this bishop out, long castle, and even though you've given up the bishop pair, what you've gotten is a huge lead in development. A, a system that puts black on a back foot very early. So early knight c3 stuff against people who play g6 and just try to get a dragon uh, you know, you can go close Sicilian style with g3, bishop g2, try to play f4, uh, and just build up your pieces slowly before creating some sort of attack. That might look something like this, just so you kind of, you know, have this understanding. f4, h3 is always useful to prevent against knight g4, you know, castles this, bishop h6, uh, f4, g4, knight f3, just kind of in a, you know, aggressive system on this side of the board. Uh, just to put a Sicilian player, like I said, on a back foot and uh, thinking about the opening setup very early in the game. Okay? Now, in my openings course, I recommend b3 and a3. Now, these are serious Sicilian sidelines. b3 just trying to play bishop, D2, uh, bishop b2, oftentimes trading the bishop or putting it on c4. Uh, one of my favorite a3 Sicilian lines as a deferred wing gambit goes like this, knight c6, b4, takes, takes, takes attacking the knight, the knight goes back, and a lot of players here don't want their center to be taken, so they'll play like this, and now knight a3 with the idea to play knight b5 and knight c7 is vicious, and I win about 85% of my games here against, you know, 80, uh, 2,600 rated players or so, so that should just give you an understanding of how venomous the a3 Sicilian, you know, really can be, but uh, to know more about that, openings course link below, but you don't need that, 
You can take a look at this knight c3 system, close Sicilian. I'm giving you as many weapons as I can. Against the French defense, uh, obviously I'm a believer in taking the center. I, 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 I'm a big fan of this system, and I'll give you the options. Uh, I think knight c3 is going to be the you know more tactical approach. There's Winnowar here in classical French that you would have to learn. Uh, there's also knight d2 French, which is a bit more positional. Obviously, both of them can become the same thing. If opponent takes, you need to know what to do against recapturing. But there is one system I'll recommend here for you to do a little exploration, and that's the bishop d3 French. There's a very good uh, author on this system, Angel, uh, I believe, uh, Angel Arribas, or Angel Arribas Lopez. I don't remember which of his last names goes first, but he's Spanish Grandmaster. A very tricky system, which looks kind of silly at first, because white wastes three tempi and puts the bishop on f3. But there is some serious tricks in this system. Uh, knight e2 comes, c4, knight c3, d5. You can give this a shot. It's really going to throw some people off uh, if you want a good anti-French. And as always, uh, you know, I recommend b3 uh, here with uh, this gambit, this very interesting gambit against the French with queen e2 and long castles. Uh, as well as uh, the two knights French. I think the two knights French is a very tricky French weapon, but it's not always guaranteed that you get it, because if you start with the two knights French, you might all of a sudden end up in a weird Sicilian transposition. So those are a couple of options that you have against the French defense. And I'm not going to lie, if you're going to face a Karo Khan and you don't like to face the Karo Khan, there's a lot of tricky stuff you can play against it. I'm going to recommend two. Uh, I, in my course and just in general to all students, I think the advanced Karo Khan has the most venom. All right, I just think that it is the most challenging weapon against bishop f5. I'm a big believer in the h4 system uh, with, with g4 stuff coming, you know, h4 trying to expand on this side of the board. Pragnananda plays the system and has won a couple of very, very, very nice games. Uh, not to mention, you know, just other grandmasters in the world. And of course, if they play uh, c5, you take and try to hang on to the pawn. Uh, one more system that's a huge sideline and is going to throw off a lot of people. Play knight c3 d5, queen e2. This is a, a very, very tricky system. Um, first of all, if d4, knight d1 is the idea. And then what you're going to do here is play g3, bishop g2, d3, f4. And you're just going to expand the fleet of pieces. Uh, this knight is going to be useful on f2 once you push the f-pawn. And by closing the center very early, you get all the king side space. So kind of a tricky system. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it does come with a little bit of venom. I've, I've, I've seen students here, for example, not want to get uh, their pawns doubled like this. So they'll play knight d7 and get mated. So you might win a game like this in checkmate in four moves. If you do, please do share the game link in the comments below. That would be uh, quite interesting and quite exciting. Uh, but queen e2, knight c3. Very interesting Karakhan system. Against the Peerts in the modern, you know, I, I, I really do enjoy uh, h3 systems. So for example... Uh, here, if if Philidor uh, knight e2, and just in general knight e2, so something like this, h3, g4, bishop g2, and knight e2. These systems are super interesting, because again, you can get a position where you've got five, five pawns mobilizing at your opponent, and once you castle, you're going to have f4, f5 coming, g5 coming, and just a general expansion of your king side. It's going to make opponents very uncomfortable. Because if you play the Peerts and the Modern, you want to you wanna be the one attacking. You don't want to be the one getting attacked to this magnitude. And you can infuse this system as well to get the Bishop off the board, Castle Queenside, take some Kingside space. So the same can be said, uh, you know, for the Modern, uh, you have Knight C3 and then this system with H3, G4, Bishop G2. But you also can just play like very simple system with, uh, you know, if there's no Knight F6, Knight F3, Bishop C4, uh, and then Queen E2, E5. An early queen e2 and an early, you know, an early e5 like this uh, with castles. And then you put, you'll put your rook on d1, replacing your queen. So in against the modern system where, you know, black doesn't play knight f6, he just plays g6, d6 like this. That is one way to play. Uh, and I mean, against the Scandinavian, well, I personally like to simply play knight f3, bishop e2 and castles and delay d4, c4. One of my favorite lines here goes like this. Bishop e2, knight c6, castles. And if black goes for a quick castle, throw in the move h3. Obviously, taking is not very good here. You just get the two bishops. Knight c3 and queen d7, b4. Investigate this line. It's in my openings course. I know I've been plugging it throughout the video, but I, I can't give you all the answers, right? I mean, that's something has to be behind a paywall. But just as an introduction, I do recommend this system uh, in it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, very exciting. And if queen a5, I just recommend, you know, 
Typical queenside attacking stuff. Delaying the move d4, not giving Scandinavian players a target, which is usually the deep on, and not letting them get into their comfort zone. Against everything else, I mean, you know, e4, uh, knight f6, uh, one very interesting, I mean, there's a lot of good ways to play against Alakine, but one line I'll recommend here for you, a4. <laughs> also in the final chapter uh, of, of uh, uh, you know, the goods, a4 is very fun, but obviously you don't have to play like this. I mean, you, you know, you could just enter a main line. Alakine, and, and the Alakine is not particularly challenging. If you're an e4 player, you need to spend the majority of your time prepping against e6, e5, c6, c5, because about 90% of your games as an e4 player will be after those moves. Everything else, and maybe right now Scandinavians got, you know, having a bit of a, a revolution at the intermediate level with Bartholomew and other strong players, you know, pushing it, but that's it. I mean, that's as good of an introduction as I can give you in about 10 minutes of how to play e4, how to approach the Sicilian, how to approach the King's Pawn, and giving you different spicy ideas to put into your repertoire so you're not bored, you're not getting the same positions all the time. Um, and if any of you have questions about lines I didn't cover, like the Italian or something like that, uh, put them in the comments below. I'll drop in. I will read through them, give some suggestions, because uh, these were all obviously a bit more biased toward my choices. Uh, and as always, you know, uh, we end with a chat question. What's your favorite sport? Please don't say chess. And if you don't have a favorite sport, I don't know. Come up with something funny to tell me. If you're interested in getting the E4 course or the E6-B6 course, it's in the description below. I think it should be the second line. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.